Administrator, first of all, I, I want to uh, say that I think in the incredible challenges that we've had in the region, Irene, Sandy, that your overall response and those of your age has been extraordinary. And uh, let me preface my remarks by saying that. I, I don't think that in the midst of this hearing that we should lose sight about, uh, from my perspective at least, from the region, the tremendous work that you've done. Uh, but uh, this particular issue falls also in your bailiwick. And uh, I have to be honest with you, uh, part of it is that uh, I tell my colleagues, some of my colleagues here, that uh, you reap what you sow. Uh, I was very much one of those voices who said we should have some degree of subsidies. And I had an amendment to try to pursue that uh, in the committee. Uh, when it became clear that that was going to be a non-starter because uh, some of our colleagues on the committee uh, would not hear of it and would not move forward, uh, then it was I who uh, was pursuing the affordability study that ultimately got included in the legislation, uh, which was supposed to be achieved 270 days after the enactment. Now, I've read your testimony, and while I wasn't here physically, I've heard the answers. Um, and I have a problem that we don't have the income levels, we don't know what the rates are, I, I don't know what you need to get the study done, uh, but, you know, I'd like to have the specifics of what you need to get the study done, number one. Uh, having said that, while we work to get the study done, I don't, I don't believe that FEMA should be allowed to uh, phase out subsidies or end grandfathering until it presents a plan to make flood insurance more affordable. Uh, and now I hear that you say you don't have uh, the wherewithal legislatively to do that. And I would invite you to submit to my office what is the language that you need, because I'd like to put my colleagues to the test. Everybody who's complaining about flood insurance and the consequences to middle class families, let's see if you're willing to put your vote to the opportunity to amend through some vehicle that I'm sure will move to the floor the opportunity to create the affordability mechanism, or at least to delay while we determine what is the consequences, because these consequences are for real people. It's not just about property. It's not the property I'm worried about. It's the people, the families, the people who call this their home. The people are not going to be able to afford it as a result of this. The people who have put a lifetime of work and sacrifice to own the single piece of property that is their single economic uh, asset that they have, overwhelmingly for most American families. We're going to take that rug right underneath it. This is the triple whammy. You had the storm that came in and destroyed people's lives. Then you had the flood maps. And, you know, with all due respect, some of those flood maps in our New Jersey experience from where we went from to where we were, thank God that we had a push on the refinement of them because 80 percent reductions in V zones that would have dramatic, even beyond what we're talking about, would have made it impossible for people to afford flood insurance. So we have to look at that process in the future. Uh, and then finally, now a human-made disaster, which is the consequences of the insurance premiums that are unaffordable for families to keep. And then in addition to the consequences to families, look at what's going to happen to this economy the ripple effect of real estate that you cannot sell because the premium is unaffordable, that no one's going to buy because the premium is unaffordable, the consequences of falling rateables, and as a former mayor, I know the consequences of the challenges of for falling rateables, and instead of getting behind this final nascent growth for the housing market, we're going to really pull the rug right underneath it, and that's going to have effects upon our economy as a whole, not just those people who find themselves in flood zones. So uh, I would like to get language from you to deal with the specificity that you think you need, and I expect the department uh, to, to give us that so that we know, and I'm going to find a way to challenge my colleagues. I know Senator Landrieu had an amendment, which I supported on the floor. Fortunately, it was held up by one of our colleagues who wouldn't let us even have a vote on it. I want to see who's really willing to help these property owners. Finally. There are two other issues that I think are incredibly uh, challenging. I, I mentioned the flood maps, and I don't think we should put out information when it ends up with 80 percent inaccuracy. I know there was the drive to get information and prepare people, but six months of preparation in which you're trying to think about what's the cost is enormous. And the last thing I'd like to ask you, 
uh, how, uh, this is seriatim, uh, how many claims for foundation repair have been denied due to earth movement. I've heard from a ton of constituents who had their flood insurance claim denied or reduced because the damage to their foundation was caused by earth movement, and the only reason the earth moved was because of the flooding. Uh, and most homeowners had no idea their policy didn't protect them from this type of damage and are understandably upset they're being denied after responsibly playing flood insurance for years and years and years. So how many claims for foundation repair have been denied due to earth movement and what outreach is done when terms are changed, not the fine line, you know, that most people never read, but when terms are changed and certain types of damage are excluded from coverage, how do they know? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Those answers before you come to the next one. Yes. Um, First uh, one, yes, we'll work with your office on technical drafting assistance, um, and we'll continue to work with all members on that. Uh, on, this, on the foundations, uh, I'll get those numbers to you, Senator. Uh, one thing, again, as Senator Landry points out, uh, in Bigger Waters, one of the things they did do, which I think is helpful in the write your own policies, it requires in big bold print what your policies cover and don't cover. I think that was to address the concerns this comes up, but we'll also get back to your office, uh, Senator, those things we're doing about uh, earth movement and how that appeal process works and the information on that. 